You're listening to SM Media, the home of exclusive West of Scotland Football League content. Welcome to part two of our West of Scotland Football League First Division 2022-23 season preview right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. On the second part of our preview, we speak to Drumchapel United, Ben Burb, Rossville and Whitlitz Victoria. For Drumchapel United, I spoke to their manager Adam Hopes about their ambitions for the season ahead and hopes to clinch promotion back to the Premier Division. Ben Burb, assistant manager Ian Gray about their hopes to try and get back into the Premier Division at the first time of asking. The new project at Rossvale, we spoke to their co-manager Kevin Kelly about trying to get back up to the Premier Division as well. And while it's Victoria's manager Gordon Pope about his ambitions in getting into management and what he's got planned for Whitlitz this season. Let's start by having a look at Drumchapel United and their manager Adam Hopes. So it's an absolute pleasure to be joined by Adam, uh, Drum Chapel United manager Adam Hopes. Adam, it's a pleasure to welcome you on. Thanks for joining me. No problem. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. We'll touch a wee bit on last season. Obviously, the so close to getting promotion to the Premier Division. Just packed to the post with Peter's Hill in the last day. But overall, a lot of positives you can take for last season, I would say. Definitely. I mean, there's never a good way of losing a league. But the way it ended up was uh, not very nice. I suppose that's football. Um, the other objective we set out to uh, accomplish was the, obviously the Senior Scottish Cup. We managed to do that. So, all in all, I, I think we've had a successful season, especially for the first season in the pyramid properly. Because uh, the, the the first season we had was obviously the COVID season. And that was that was just more about guys getting out the house to play football because of the pandemic and stuff like that. So, yeah. which was a good learning curve for us, obviously. Uh, that we that we season that we had during COVID, but uh, ultimately last season was the uh, the big one for us, and uh, I would still see it as a success, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. As well, you mentioned they're obviously winning the trophy that secures you the the Scottish Cup for this season. How much is looking forward to that? Oh, I've the I've the around the place is buzzing, um, and we've also got uh, a facility, Donald Dewar, as we speak, that. Um, I reckon it reaches the league criteria. We've got the spectator barrier in, we've got the netting round the fence in, we've got our dugouts in, we've got the changing rooms. Um, so everything up there is taking shape. Um, we've got a new AstroTurf due to go in in about 10 weeks' time, which, to be honest, we really need one, but uh, we're getting one. Mm-hmm. Um, so we might need to play maybe four or five weeks away from home, the versatiles because of that. Um, <clears throat> well, that's getting done. And uh, we've got two shelter stands going in as well. Um, which is hopefully going to be happening in the next month or so. Um, and also we've got a, a stadium going in uh, behind the dugouts, but that's not going to be going in to probably a year or so. But um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we could maybe have a licence for next season. Brilliant. That sounds really good. It all sounds as if it's going really well. We'll touch a wee bit in the transfer business you've done. Obviously, the, the kind of main story of the, the summer for you was the signing of David Temple. And obviously former Rangers and Hearts winger coming out of retirement. How good was it to get him in and how much are you kind of looking forward to getting him to work with the younger boys? Aye, uh, it, it's quite funny. Uh, Demps has ended up at us, to be honest with you, because uh, me and Daz were through at uh, New Douglas Park one night towards near the end of last season. We are just having a look at the kids' training and stuff like that because obviously there maybe be some boys that they get kept on and obviously we could have a wee chance of maybe bringing them to the club. Yeah. Obviously, we'd spoke with Temps and uh, the guy, George Cairns, that uh, runs the academy and that up there, had a joke about it with Temps to me and Daz. And uh, that was the extent of it, basically. I just, we, I didn't think anything of it, do you know what I mean? Because obviously, I in August because of what he was led to believe was a ruptured ham- hamstring. Uh, and then the communication started. And then the next minute, you know, he ended up signing me. So, uh, I, great, great signing for the club. Um and he's, he's probably got about five sessions under his belt now uh, during pre-season, but it's not something that we really want just due to the fact that he's not really played since August. Mm-hmm. So 
but everything's going well. He's um his training program, uh, getting in about the boys and stuff like that. Everything's been really good and positive. So hopefully we'll see him come the start of the season. And that'll be really good. Uh, we're all kind of looking forward to seeing. Hopefully he kind of comes back and he's, he shows that shows what he, he could do back in the day. But more signings as well. Like others, he's have done really well so far. Like Blair Lockhead from Adros and J Mac and Alex for Mary Hill, who scored a lot of goals last year. He likes a Don McLaren for Cumbernauld. There's a lot of good players in there. Like how how good are you? How happy with you with the business you've done so far? I'm I'm genuinely d- delighted. Uh, every single player that's came in has um, been very good. Uh, the training, the, the the training aspect's been really really good for us this preseason. Uh, the numbers have been good, apart from the injuries. Obviously, the the attitude, the everything's been. I can't ask any more for the boys. Um, obviously, we've had a couple of not results in the friendlies, but at the same time, it's pre season. A lot of clubs not get. I mean, the long shot it is. It's all about minutes and legs. It's about getting up to match speed. Uh, nothing's won or lost in friendlies. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people texting me, joking about getting the sack and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, if MD was to get the start because they're friendly, something's far wrong. Um, but our last two games we picked up, obviously, we beat St. Cuthbert's through there on Saturday uh, and we managed to beat Rob Roy last night. So the boys are starting to find our, um, their feet again and it's came at a good time, to be fair. So, um, aye. Yeah, absolutely as well. Obviously, one thing about this league, the, the first division this season, it's going to be extremely competitive. How Would you agree with that? Definitely. I mean... I, I don't think anyone can uh, try and read a script in regards to teams that are competing in this league's pre-season form because uh, as soon as next Saturday comes and that league starts, you, you'll soon see what all the teams are all about. And it is, I, I really can't see anyone uh, having an easy week on a, a weekend, sorry, an easy weekend on a Saturday. If these going to fans their chances, it's a level playing field in my opinion. Um, with the, the standard of teams that's in it so it'll be interesting to see how it goes Yeah absolutely and what about yourselves what's the kind of overall target what are you aiming for this season? I've I've said this any time I've done anything like this there's only one goal for me and, and I'll implement it the boys and it's to win it uh, otherwise I, 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 <laughs> it's just a, the reality I mean none of, not me, me me personally I don't take part in football to get beat mm-hmm. partly when he win every game. I, I take part. He win trophies, and that's what the the incentive and the the message will be to all the boys and that changing them. Well, we're wishing you all the best for the season ahead, Adam. It's been really good to be on. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for having me. So we're delighted to be joined by Ian Gray, the assistant manager of Benbor. Being it's a pleasure as always to welcome you on. Thanks for doing it. No worries, Scott. Brilliant. Obviously, it's hard to. I've never ever spoke to a, a team who would fit who had fifty two points last season and still managed to get relegated. But you must have a lot of positives for the season, despite the, the finish. Yeah, it, it's strange because we did have a really good season, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and in any other season, as you say, with fifty two points and a plus seven goal difference, mm-hmm. you're never getting relegated. No. So we couldn't fault any of the players for any of their efforts. And to be honest, the last the last game of the season we had uh, Rob Roy up at Cumbernauld and won that game. We thought we'd done enough to stay in the division. Yeah. Um, and as I said, we just really a victim of circumstance for that season. Us and probably Cumbernauld as well, who were only a point behind us. Yeah. We'd probably feel the same way. If you look at the league, the top six, you would probably say we're never going to be involved in a relegation battle. And then between Cumnock and seventh, and us getting relegated, there's five points. Exactly. Yeah. You know so. Um, uh, we did. We did feel a bit aggrieved, to be honest. But it's done now. We just need to to, to, to start plan ahead for the season. Um, and I think we were a wee bit affected by circumstance in the fact that we played a lot of midweek games at the start of the season, mm-hmm. and the midweek games were the kind to us. And yeah. We never picked up a lot of points in those games, mm-hmm. and we finished all fixtures on time. Um, and I'm not having a go at any other team here because everybody's got to look after their own club and do what's best, what they feel best for their own club. But we played our fixtures against full strength teams when they still had something to play for. Mm-hmm. No, it's, 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 um, it's, it was a weird season, but obviously it means the the first division, seven teams going down from it, and obviously the conferences have kind of worked in worked into the first division. It does look a competitive league. 
Oh, it's 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 going to be a really competitive league. We know before when we were coming up the league, when we were in the championship, how difficult a league it is to get out. You've obviously got the seven teams that have been relegated um, and yeah. coming down who will all have um designs again back up, you know, some big clubs in there like Old Burnley. Um and then you've got a few of the newer ambitious clubs like St. Caddox, Drumchapel and Gapcairn in the mm-hmm. league. And then you've got a few of the traditional clubs, you know, your Neilstons, Johnson Borough, St. Rock, etc. Um, and it's it's more or less like an old, for the folk that will remember it, it's more or less like an old central first division. Because uh-huh. you've only got three, you've only got what looks called Burnley and Bonnet. Mm-hmm. And every other team would have been the old, would have been the old central first division. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have a lot of, um, a lot of derbies really. Or, mm-hmm. you know, so it will be really, really competitive. <laughs> It, it, it'll be dif- difficult for us because I think in the top division there was probably a lot of games where uh, not saying teams took us lightly but they would probably have been seen as heavy favourites and we were the underdogs mm-hmm. because I think in this division the, the roles might be reversed a wee bit and in a lot of the games we might be favourites Yeah, you know, because we've, we've come down for the top division mm-hmm. so that'll be a different challenge for us boys you know yeah. the, the pressure will be on when they're expected to win the games whereas you know, if we had been down to Talbot or whatever, uh, although we try to win every game, getting a draw down there is a good result. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, know? absolutely, it's yeah. A different type of pressure for us. And as I say, there's a lot, of, a lot of big teams in the division and a lot of ambitious teams in the division that yeah. are designs are uh, going up as well. Mm-hmm. So, what's uh, pre-season been yeah. like? What's the, what's been the kind of... Really, really good, to be honest. Um, I think we just had a, the right length of break, not too short, not too long. The way it worked in. Um, we've managed to re-sign everybody we wanted to re-sign for last season, which was a real bonus. Um, a lot of the boys showing a good bit of loyalty to the club because a lot of them had offers to, mm-hmm. to go elsewhere. And the, to be fair, the club been loyal with them over the <laughs> years, so, um, They've all stayed. We only really lost um, young Scott Ruff, went to Muirkirk, and Rudy Langan, who we had in loan for Stuart and Ra, uh, signed for Beath. Right. But we managed we had Aaron Black and loan for Darvo and we've now managed to sign him permanently, yeah. which, which is a big signing for us as mm-hmm. well. Um and at the tail end of last season we we brought in big Aaron Miller for St. Caddox and Matt Meeting for Mary Hill. So they've like a couple of new signings as well. So our uh, pre-season's gone really well. It's, the boys have all come back, to be fair, they're all in really good shape. It, it's not like Maddie when people are coming back, cups don't overweight. And <laughs> they were struggling for the first few weeks. All these boys nowadays all do something over and above the yeah. almost two nights anyway a lot of them are members of the gym and mm-hmm. they do their own thing so uh, they've been looking really sharp we've got the club's invested a fair, a fair bit of money and we've got all the GPS trackers now as well uh, so they've all got their own tracker um, so that they put on every training session every game so there isn't any hiding place anyway you mm-hmm. know we can see uh, we download the stats after every training session every game so we can see at a glance where people are you know where they've been in the session if they're struggling, they had lots of people have been away on holiday for a week and they come back the first night back. Yeah, you know, I know. the difference in the stats before they were away because they've been away for a week, you know, but they yeah. quickly get back to where they were before. So it's, it's been going, it's been going really, really well. Really pleased with, um, with the fitness of the guys, to be honest. Brilliant. What about the kind of targets for the season? Is uh, there's going to obviously get a lot of competitions as well. What's the kind of ambitions? Is it is promotion realistic? Is it something you're, you're aiming to? Our, our ambitions to win the league. I think with the squad we've got in place, because we finished the season with a far stronger squad than we started with. And to be fair, we've got a Premier Division squad. We feel, you know, um, so our, our ambitions got to be to win the league. Or at the very least get promoted, and and you know that's I don't think that's been overly ambitious. It's not been disrespectful to the rest of the clubs in the league because you know what every game's going to be really hard and really difficult to get the points on the board. But I think with the squad we've got in place, that's going to be my target. And I would like us to get a decent run. In, you know, not just myself, but Paul and the rest of my team would like us to get a decent run in one of the cups because I've been there ten years and I feel that's something that's missing. I think we got to the semis. Uh, the old Central District Cup one season and apart from that our cup record's not been particularly good I think when we were going up through the leagues we were concentrating and get promoted and then last season we were obviously concentrating everybody was trying to stay in the league yeah. and the Cups were maybe not say secondary but they weren't the priority so I think I'd like to get a run in one of the Cups as well because I think we're more than capable when you see 
um, some of the teams, you know, are getting fair distances in cups. You know, if you get a sort of yeah. favourable draw, and obviously we've got the senior Scottish as well now. Yeah, I was so, going to ask about that as well. Obviously, how big how big is that for the club getting the, the SFA membership? Ab- absolutely massive. A lot of lot of hard work went into went into getting that. Uh, club have invested a lot of money and a lot of time and effort to, to satisfy all the criteria. Mm-hmm. Um, big shout out to, to Derek Rodden, to Dico, and and, and, and Paul, and, and Martin Montgomery. And a few other guys in the club that spent a lot of time uh, in the background getting everything sorted. Uh, we built the new sort of covered enclosure to comply with that. Get, we gave the, the stand, uh, mm-hmm. done a swap with co winning. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's massive because that that's, should help us to attract players and, and hopefully attain players when they've got a chance of competing in the senior Scottish. Yeah. And again, if you get a favourable draw the first couple of rounds, you've seen last season, but it's seen to do it every other season right now. <laughs> You seen last season with Clyde Bank and Dad. Well, I think Clyde Bank were twenty seconds away if you playing Rangers. Yeah, you know, uh, if you get if you're fortunate enough to get through, you get one of the, the Premier League clubs. You know that that could set you up for seasons. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So absolutely. yeah, it's, it's been a massive draw. And said the, the, the clubs invested. The clubs invested a lot in infrastructure with the club and invested a lot in the, the playing staff and even things like the, getting the GPS trackers and all that. You know, so. There's a real, uh, especially uh, since Paul came on board, there's a real professionalism about the club, you know. Um, so, aye, the senior Scottish is, is massive for us, and it was a real, you know, I it was a real bonus for everybody to get confirmation that we'd uh, we got a license. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for doing this, and We wish all the best for the season ahead. Well, we've got thanks a lot. Any time, mate. So it's a pleasure to welcome on onto the show the Rossville co-manager Kevin Kelly. Kevin, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Obviously, a uh, pleasure. Like, like everybody else, just looking forward to the season start. Absolutely, yeah. It's obviously been a, a busy summer for you. We'll touch a wee bit on obviously the what's happened over the summer at the club with the, the split for the academy. It's obviously no ideal, but you mentioned there just before we come on the air, it's it's all about just putting a team in the park, isn't it? And just obviously getting getting on the park and leaving that to the other, the kind of top people. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. You know, my 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 job's to to get um a squad of eighteen twenty players together to uh along with along with the management team to to get a team on the park and and be competitive this year. You know, I I've got no underestimations about how how tough it's going to be this year. You know, I think everybody can see how how competitive that league's going to be, and you know, some some even saying it's more competitive than the the Premier League, which which I probably tend to agree with. You know, when you look at uh, the standard of opposition in our league this year is probably as hard as it's been for many, many a year. Yeah, absolutely as well. Obviously, and the big thing, obviously, when you went in, the, a lot of players have left for kind of last season, obviously getting down to the first division. You've had to kind of basically kind of wipe the slate clean and but kind of build it for the for the bottom down, bottom up. Like what's what's been what's it been kind of like the early times again? And we obviously you and Alex. Uh, well, I, I think uh, I think there's two ways to look at that. You know, a lot's changed obviously since the end of last season, personally and and with the club. Um, you know, when this opportunity came along, I, I jumped at it. I thought, you know, personally, I feel it's a chance to stamp your own ethos and things. You know, I think with the management team in place, myself and Alex and Alan, um, we we only look forward now. You know, <coughs> obviously, it was a bit hell of a skill when we went in. I'm sure everybody's heard of. The things that went on at the club and people are about here saying things, but you know, all that we need to know is that we're managing to get a squad together and and it's looking it's looking rather healthy at the moment and hopefully we'll look to add to that over in the coming weeks. You know, yeah. What's the kind of transfer activity been like? Like who you brought in so far that you think is going to make an impact? It's, it's it's been it's been it's been good. Let's let's say that you know I think from from where we were when we came in, um, you know, a kind of blank sheet of paper as such. You know, um, to to get names down, it's it's been good. You know, we've brought players in the standard. Of, you know, Luke Crerand, you know, comes with a really good pedigree. You know, I had them at St Rocks last year and done very well for us. Um, looks a guy that you know can collect the ball and take you 60, 70 yards up the pitch in a breeze. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes don't get me wrong, sometimes the ball bounces off him, but hey, you know, you don't always you don't always get what you want. But uh, no, I, I think I think uh, with the players we've got, we've got a young player, Aidan McAvoy. Uh, brought in from Benny Pace, who'd been out of the game, who's you know who's got everything in, in the, everything in the box on me, I think, um, and he, and I think he knows that, which is good. You know, he's a wee bit gallus about things, and and I, I like that about the players. And uh, 
And then, you know, it'll, it'll not go unnoticed with brought in a Maverick Vinny Newlands, you know. Vinny comes with great pedigree and, you know, really good reputation, but it's just going to be our job to get the best out of him every week, you know, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. Yeah. What's pre-season been like so far? Like, what's, what's kind of in the standout kind of games? Are good to get games under the belt as well? Oh, it's been great. It's been great. You know, we started our games last Thursday. Um, we came in four weeks ago tomorrow, um, probably two two or three weeks behind everybody else, you know, due to everything that went on at the club. Um, but, you know, no making excuses. The, boy, the boys have worked hard. Would have liked to have that extra couple of weeks. I would have. I would have loved for us to have that extra couple of weeks. But, hey, you've got to, you've got to deal with the cards you're dealt. Um, so, fitness-wise, we're maybe a week or so away from where we would like us to be. But in the sense of playing and our playing style, I, I definitely think we're getting there. You know, we started um, at Oakley last Thursday, um, which was good to get the boys back playing, get them a touch of the ball. Because, to be honest, I've not done a lot without the ball this year at pre-season. It's been a little bit different. And I think, again, that comes with being able to kind of put your own um, stamp on things. You know, I've been at clubs where all, all the players have done for maybe two and three weeks is just running, hardly seen a ball, you know, I think. I think we've had a good balance this year. Um, and then we went down on Saturday to Dalbite, um, had a great performance down there. I, I was uh, I was very impressed with the setup down at Dalbite. You know, I suppose a long league, you shouldn't expect anything less, but, you know, a great a great, uh, a great great standard of, of things that they're trying to do down there. But I just felt, you know, one of the days where things, everything clicked for us and it, it gives a real look to, to what we're looking at. You know, it gave us, gives us a good idea and, of how we're looking to play and what players we we're looking at at different positions and things and and the players have done really well in that you know they've they've adapted some players maybe come in as a central midfielder and they've filled in uh, you know centre half and things um I, I think the other thing to reiterate is that COVID's in a way you know with the yeah. three COVID cases in the camp which is which set us back a bit as well you know so um so that that that's the other thing you've got to contend with but no. I, at this moment in time, I could say that we're, we're happy. we happy with where we're at, definitely. And obviously, the big thing we've, we've touched on, we touched on at the start, just how competitive that league is with seven coming down and the three conference, the kind of second, third and fourth in the conferences. There is a lot of teams in that league who are wanting to kind of get promotion up to that Premier Division. How hard is it going to be and how good is it to go off to a good start? I think it's important. It's very important, you know. Um, I think when you're... Everybody looks to the fixtures, don't they? Everybody looks to the first three, four, five fixtures. But I certainly learned last year, you know, we went off, when I was at St Rocks last year, we went off to a great start. And don't, hey, listen, don't get me wrong, we had a we had a really torrid time with, with things at the club. But, you know, Peter Hill never had a great start last year and they managed to build um, a, an incredible run and, and it's credit to them and how, how hard they worked during the season, you know. Um, but I, I don't always think it's about a good start, but, you know, you, you certainly look, if you, if you can get it, then you definitely take it, you know. Yeah, what's the kind of overall target for the season, though? Like, what's your ambitions and your aspirations going into this season? I think, you know, I don't think I'd be speaking out of turn here by saying, uh, I think a few clubs will have, have us, as his cannon fodder, you know. Um, I'm watching my good mate back there putting his podcast out, you know, uh, saying that a, a few clubs will fancy us for relegation, but um, no, we we are certainly looking well well beyond that. You know, uh, we are looking to consolidate ourselves this year, um, and hopefully get a decent a decent cup run. You know, and listen, the thing that I've always said to our players as well. You know, and a and a very, I don't know how much the club would like me saying this, but you know, I I don't always just see progression as uh, you know winning trophies constantly. Yeah, I understand that people. That's what we play the game for. We always want to win. You know, there's probably nobody a bigger winner than me. You know, I absolutely despise him. But even my missus now looks at the Twitter on a Saturday night to see what sort of mood I'm going to come in. You know what I mean? To keep an eye on the score. Um, but you know, if we can, if we can uh, improve players and you know look to get them moved on as well, you know, then and I don't mean I don't mean to teams in our league. Uh, I mean, you know, if we can get players playing at a higher level, such as the loan league or in the top, you know, three or four clubs in the Premier League, then great. And if you can get my senior move, then excellent as well. But we're always looking to improve, not just the standards of uh, of the club, but uh, you know, playing staff as well. You know, and, and I'm saying that because I feel that I have players in our squad that maybe just need a run of games. You know, maybe yeah. never had the opportunity before, and they're starting to show that. You know, my three or four games under a belt consecutively, uh, they've got they've got a lot to show and, and real good talent. You know, 
I think the other thing is, what I've seen here, experience is, all, is key in that. You know, players like Luke Kerr and Vinny Newlands, you know, Jason Elliott as well. I brought Jason back into the game. Jason fell away for it last year due to, you know, things that happened at St. Rocks in the sense that, you know, the manager and stuff passing away. And, you know, I think it was just a bit hard for them. So, you know, that, which is completely understandable. So it's good to get these players back playing and they become invaluable um, when it comes to dragging young players along as well. So, so I, I think it's important that we don't get too carried away, but we do certainly set our ambitions high. We don't, we don't accept, you know, substandard. Yeah. Well, we're wishing you all the best for the season, Kevin. Thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. I no, appreciate that. Thanks very much. And all the best for yourself, OK? So it's an absolute pleasure to welcome the Butler's Victoria manager, Gordon Pope, on the show. Gordon, welcome to the show. Finally, we've got you on. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Appreciate it's an absolute it. pleasure. How you been? Aye, good. Aye. Enjoying, enjoying pre-season. And looking forward to the season ahead. Absolutely. Obviously, uh, towards the kind of tail end of last season, you took over at Watlitz for the under-20s at Auckland Leg. How you found it getting into Watlitz? What was it like towards the end of last season? Uh, it was tough, to be honest, because we come in just after a sticky patch, to be honest. The manager had left, uh, they'd lost the game <coughs> just, be- just before we come in, they'd lost, and things were a wee bit up in the air. The boys, boys seeds were gone, to be honest, at the time. Injuries, injuries were shocking towards the end of the season. But we managed to pick them up and we kept on, which was great. The boys' effort towards the end of the season was different class, so it was. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, a fourth-place finish. Delighted to get over the line in it in the first division. Aye, aye. We left it to the last game, which wasn't the ideal, but eh, no, as I say, the efforts for the boys towards the end of the season were great. You know, I think we ended up with 12 senior players in the last game. The rest of it was filled with youth players, and we dug in and managed to get up, so it was great from that point of view. What has it been like your first pre-season as a manager? Has it been different to what you've been, been used to as a player? <laughs> aye, it's good, because I don't need to do the running anymore, <laughs> but <laughs> I know it's, it's been great. Uh, as I say, the boys have all come back. Decent, again, with great fitness straight away. So that, that was a great help for us. Because we finished quite early. We were second week in April. Mm-hmm. You know, considering you know, the Premier League finished quite late on. So we get a wee good five, six week break before we come back. And then the boys, as I say, the boys have been working hard and it's been going well. Brilliant. What about the kind of players in and out? Like, obviously, Cammy Ross is very quiet. Like, that was a, a really good move for him. Are you pleased to see him going to a team like that? Oh, definitely. I told Cammy that it's a great opportunity for him. I think he's he's only there for the month on the amateur mm-hmm. terms, so yeah, he's just getting incentive there to go and kick on and do well. But Cammy's a great player. He's just mm-hmm. he's got to stick at it. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. What about players you brought in? Who you brought in so far? Brought in, we brought in Dean McComb and Sandy Robertson from Bonnet. Well, mm-hmm. Dean had a good season for Bonnet. I know it was a bit of a tough year for them, but personally for Dean, Dean scored fifteen goals in the top division, so. It's good to add a, another goal scorer to your, your squad. Sandy, Sandy's a good midfielder. He's, he's a bit aberrant, to be honest, in the middle of the park. Uh, we brought Jason Walker back, who was it? He came and loan for the Darvo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's he's actually signed now with us, which is great. That young lad, great attitude. He's got everything to go and do well in the game. Uh, Try to think who else we've got in. Uh, Lewis, Lewis Kerr, back up. Uh, Goalkeeper, he's there to push one other goalkeeper, so it was great to have two goalies competing against each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamie Hill come in from mid of 20s. Right. Jamie's a talented boy, just got to work a wee bit. We've got to work a wee bit with him, mm-hmm. but he'll get there definitely. Another one that's got good ability. Yeah. And we've got one or two others we're training with us just now that's just waiting to get fi- finalised with really. it. Obviously, as well, the I've, I've been down it well, in the past couple of weeks and I've heard all about the kind of plans you've got. Obviously, that's a game of last season at Dan Park before he's moved back to Whitlitz. What's, what's it like? How impressed have you been with the kind of facilities and the plans going forward? Oh, plans plans look great. Uh, obviously, the, the, the pitch is there. It's just the infrastructure around about the, yeah. the pitch that's been updated. But it'll be great to have our own pitch, to be honest. That's going to be the big the big help. We train on the pitch twice, twice a week just now, so... We're getting we're used to it already, so mm-hmm. the transition for Dan Park to a new pitch will be, will be no problem, to be honest. Yeah, it looks really good. I, mean, I was very impressed when I was down having a look at it. What about pre-season so far? How good has it been to get some games under the belt for the side? Aye, it was good to get the new boys bedded in. You know, they've, they've come in and gelled with the rest of the squad straight away. Uh, game-wise, it's been good the past couple of games. have been 
we've been good, they've been competitive, we'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Hill and Craig Mark were very competitive. So it's been good to see how the boys have reacted to the type of games because the season coming ahead, we're going to have tough games mm -hmm. every week. So it's building up towards that. So it's good. I'm definitely yeah. doing well. Yeah, really good. It's a very competitive league, isn't it? With the three teams coming, going up for each conference, and obviously seven teams coming down. What's your thoughts? There's going to be no easy games in this league, isn't there? No, no. <laughs> I think everybody knows this is probably going to be the toughest league at the, at the four. Every week you're going to be up against it. So I think start. We need to start strong. We already said that. Yeah, a good start. It's brilliant because obviously, as you say, you've got the six teams, seven teams coming down. You've got a couple of teams out there that are spent, probably spending more than us. So mm -hmm. they're going to be up there, I would expect, like the St. Caddox, who's brought in good players. So it's going to be exciting. It really is. We're looking forward to the challenge. The boys are definitely up for it. Brilliant. What's the kind of overall targets for the season? What's your ambitions for your football team this year? Oh, I'd love to. Top three, I'd love it. You know, but as you say, it's, it's all about the start. You've got to start strong this season. It's... Week in, week it's going to be tough for us. We know that. And the, as I say, the boys are up for it, which is great for us. But we've got to push as high as we can. You know, I'll set the bar high, always do. So they're pushing ourselves to go and finish high, which is even better for them. Brilliant. Well, we're wishing you all the best for the season ahead. Gordon, it's been an absolute pleasure to be on. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks very much.